G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers Survival and it's time, well I mean I guess it's hopefully survival this time since I'm about to go into battle. First thing I need to do is turn on the Chicken Hawks dampeners and this is really strange to do since I wouldn't normally put on the dampeners of something I'm carrying. But, in the case of the bin chicken right now, if I don't have the dampeners on the chicken hawk, the chicken hawk is too heavy for me to lift. The dampeners are kind of neutralizing its mass, so although they're going to stop me from moving very easily, although that won't really be too big an issue because I don't have a... Oh, no, I do have a reverse thrust underneath. Oh, a reverse thrust that's going to cook that landing gear. Need to remember that later. Although it's going to slow me down because it allows me to fly at all, it's something I'm just going to live with. So, we need to attack the enemy base. Let's turn our dampeners on. Let's start flying. Oh yeah. So the plan of this attack is fly over the enemy base, drop these sandbags, and hope that everything works out okay. And that the sandbags will drop close enough to the base that I can swoop in with the chicken hawk and destroy the turrets while the sandbags are occupying it. Fingers crossed it actually works out that way. Now, once we're clear of the debris field, I can turn the turrets back on. Let's do that now. One thing I don't want to forget to do. Oh dear. That'll be that landing gear. <laughs> oh, uh, the smoke kind of looks cool. I just really hope that it doesn't unlock. Because if it unlocks, we are in trouble. A lot of trouble. Because <laughs> I will lose the chicken hawk. I am hopeful that since we are now using the multiplayer update, that Reggie is going to get an awesome view of what's going on. I've got his camera set up. So, fingers crossed I can drop these into view and also come in with the chicken hawk from the same angle. We will see, I guess. I'd kind of like to get maybe 1.2 to 1.5 kilometers up above the enemy base. 
I want the sandbags to be traveling at high speed until their parachutes deploy. That way, they'll be moving at maximum speed until they are in range of the enemy turrets, not giving the enemy turrets a chance to pick them off while they're going slowly. Although I guess the prediction algorithm is probably not going to work as well if I took advantage of the acceleration of gravity and still had them accelerating. Oh, I don't know. That sounds way too complex for me to figure out right now. Okay, let's get ourselves nice and perfectly level. Then I'll have a better idea of where I'm dropping over. There's a new effect, or an effect that's been fixed, which is this kind of dust-off effect, which the chicken hawk is making off the bin chicken. Uh, I kind of like it. I especially like it when we're actually dusting off the ground. So let's move forward a bit more, I think. We want to go over this way a little bit. I'm going to turn broadcast on for these things, then... I should be able to go into the terminal of these and check to see what their parachutes are doing. And good, auto deploy height set to 500 meters. And I did do that for all of them. Now this control here is my turn auto deploy on. We are still not quite as high as I want to be. Parachute auto deploy is on. Then it's going to be a quick drop and jump into control of the chicken hawk so three two one drop chicken hawk control view unlock let's go let's follow him down parachutes deploy come on come on yes parachutes deployed all right Let's not go down quite so quickly. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Gotta get a shot, gotta get a shot. One turret down. Come on. Come on, baby. Let's get around. Get around, get around, get around. Sandbags are doing their thing. They are getting hammered, though. Oh, no! Chicken Hawk took a hit! Oh! No, 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 no! Oh no! The sandbags still seem to be intact, so that turret must be down. I wonder if we can get a bit closer and see what's going on. be able to sneak up. I don't think I ran into the ground. Hearing lots of gunfire. Is it two two way? Or is it all coming from me? Staying behind the sandbags. I think it's still intact. Alright. We seem to be okay down here. I'm going to see if I can take it out with my turret. With my rifle. Wasn't expecting this to be a ground assault, but let's do it. Don't know what the turrets are shooting at. Can I get an angle on this thing? Without getting killed. Also, what the? Oh, that's right! <laughs> I totally forgot that I did this! <laughs> There's actually a mining deposit in front of the ore handling facility that I sort of drilled out with voxel hands before I even did this. Totally forgot that! Distracted. Focus. Let's see if I can get up through here. Oh man, I think there's interior turrets in this thing. And I can see up through there. Let's hope they don't get an angle on me. I think 
that's the turret right there. Oh yeah. Yes! Haha. -ha. What happened to the chicken hawk? I have no idea what actually happened to it. Oh man. Where do whereabouts did it go down? It was somewhere. <gasps> oh. Do you know what I think might have happened to the chicken hawk? I think it might have been taken out by the interior turrets. So I reckon there's a gap through somewhere here that's allowed them to get an angle on it. Because I was over this side, I think. And I got taken down. I don't see any markers around here or anything obvious of where it's gotten to. But whatever took me out, took me out hard. Because I lost signal immediately. I didn't have a camera option. I didn't have anything. I'm going to have to look at that footage. That is going to be uh, interesting. If we have a close look at the slow motion, you can see that the turret seems to be facing in the wrong direction. However, I am somewhat underneath where the sandbags were dropping. I'm wondering whether I was destroyed by two possibilities. One, whether a chunk of a sandbag landed on the battery of the chicken hawk and caused a explosion and destruction of the chicken hawk or if the reverse thruster cooking the landing gear caused enough damage to blow up the whole thing i'm thinking it's more likely the former than the latter since a destroyed landing gear doesn't usually cause that much damage when it blows up but i mean it's possible but you can see from Reggie's point of view, I definitely didn't hit the ground. I don't seem to have been shot, so I, who knows. Either way, that was a fun fight. Well, <laughs> I'd call that a success. Yeah, sure, we lost a chicken hawk, but dang. This thing's almost secure. I just now have to figure out a way to take out those interior turrets without dying. I wonder if I build another chicken hawk, if I can get it to do that for me. Or should I just arm some other vehicle I've got? Let's just see. I want to... I don't want to fly around too much over here. But let's go and get a bit of altitude and see if I can see the wreckage of the chicken hawk. Oh, there it is. No, that's the big chicken. Oh, there it is. That is quite literally all that is left of the chicken hawk. Huh. <laughs> that is not good. Oh, man. Oh, 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 oh. I've got an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea. Um, have you got ammo in you? No. Have you got ammo in you? I bet I've run out of ammo in all of these things. Dang it. I definitely have. Okay. I am going to do something a little bit crazy. Alright, Ben Chicken, let's head home. We're going to give you a temporary upgrade. Oh no! No, 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 we're not. No, we're not. I'm going to use a different vehicle. I'm bringing the tick over. Yes, I am. Can't let the bin chicken have all the fun. What I want is a vehicle that's got a turret on it so that I can use the turret as a direct control and take out the interior turrets that way. I suspect it's going to give me an increased chance of surviving. There's something else that I want to show you guys as soon as we get back to the base, which is a major change to the aesthetics. And it's not something that I did myself. There has been a very, 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 very big upgrade to Shoustel's catwalks. It's a complete redesign. And I, for one, actually really like it. And I think we'll get a pretty good view of some of the changes as soon as we go over the bridge. Since I do have some of those in the center of the bridge. There we go. Looking slightly different. 
What I really like about these new catwalks is the fact that they're black on the center of the grid, on all the grid bits, means that you kind of pay more attention to what's behind them than what than the actual grid itself. Which means flying around this hangar, I'm actually looking more down into the service passageways than I am looking at the reflection of the white light or the white color that I had them previously. And I think that's really kind of cool. And looking at all the bin chicken spots, you're looking more at the stuff that's behind it as well. It was always pretty obvious what was here, but it's now much more so. You can kind of appreciate it here. Before, when we looked at this, I saw mostly the white of the grid. Now I'm seeing mostly the conveyor tubes behind the grid. Before I get distracted from it, there is something I think I should point out to you guys. If you're loading up your worlds and they're like mine and you've got lots of random bits of grids left around the place. You can see that the bin chicken's bin is actually somewhat empty. And that's because the... Well, let's find it here. Trash removal. And that's because the trash removal gets reset and a lot of stuff got cleaned up before I had a chance to update this to the new setting, to my usual settings. So just keep that in mind. It may do some things to clean up your scenarios if they're anything like mine. But back to Shoustle's catwalks, I kind of like this. It's added an extra degree of depth, I think, to the base, having these a different colour. Plus, oh, where can we go to show this off? I think just here. I really like the work he's done on these railings. Oh, where have I got stairs? Stairs. I want to show stairs. Stairs are... The stairs are amazing. They fit the style of everything else so well now. I'm really happy with it. That was literally the only reason I want to come, come up here. Is Reggie down there? Hello, Reggie! How's it going? Alrighty, Tick. Let's get going. Spotlight automatically turns off as I drive out. Ooh, I think it might be a good opportunity now to drive the whole way to that base. Get an idea of the terrain that the goose is going to have to deal with. Just kind of scout out a path. Turn the tick into a bit of a pathfinder. Our lampposts as we go past. Now I think to get over the ice I want to swing a bit wider than I would normally for the mine. Oh dear. Oh dear. No, no. No, 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 no. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> Thank you tree. I think you just saved me. Ah, you're now stuck to me. Get off. Get off. I hope that we can get the goose relatively close to the enemy base. I'm not expecting to be able to get up right next to it, but close as in like 100, and 100 or so meters away would be really nice. Ooh, this could be quite steep for the goose, especially if the trailer ends up being heavy. Oh, um... We'll have to see. So I don't think I actually drove... Oh, I did drive down here right at the beginning when I got my first ever load of ice. So if that thing could get down here, then the goose should be able to manage it because it's better equipped than that first vehicle was. What the tick eventually became. I mean, what eventually became the tick. I wonder if I could take that slope up this way. Hang on. Let's turn you on. Take control. Whoops. Did a bad, bad thing. Okay, that's forward. Let's turn. So, what I was thinking was, 
maybe we'll be able to go up that slope up there. Should be nice. Oh yeah, I can shoot. Good. This actually isn't a bad way to drive. Huh. I kind of like it. <laughs> Makes me feel ready for anything. Yeah, this bit of terrain definitely looks possible. At least it will definitely be possible by the tick. Does look relatively steep, but I think it'll still be within the goose's abilities. Especially if I do add some thrusters to the trailer to give us some extra oomph. Not too bad yet. Oh, okay, this is getting steep. A little bit rough at the top bit. That could be troublesome. Oh yeah, quite rough. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be the way to go with the goose. We're going to need to find another route. That's just a bit too much for the hitch mechanism to handle, I suspect. I think if I go over those sorts of bumps at any sort of speed, the goose will just fall apart. Because it'll be beyond what the rotors can handle. Still, this might give me some high ground advantage over the tower if I can get up onto there. Which means I suspect I may have to go the long way round. Don't think I'll make it up those bits. I could just turn on my thrusters and fly up there, but I kind of... I really do want to get a bit of an idea of the lay of the land rather than just doing that. That's all too rough. That's all really rough too. Oh, that's a bit smoother. Let's go up through there. wonder if we can make it up through this bit. I think we can. I hope all those little tinkling noises are just the rotors making a little bit of a racket. Okay. Oh, nuts. I don't think we're going to get an angle on the tower where we're outside of the range of the interior turrets. We're actually going to have to hope that we win this little battle. Okay. We are parked. I can't see anything through there. Let's move a little bit this way. Maybe we'll head up onto this bit of the hill. See if we can spot it from there. Oh, that looks suspicious. I recognize those silhouettes. There we are. One turret, two turrets. I think those easily could have been what took out the chicken hawk. And I think... We might be able to take them if we shoot out the glass first. I'm going to give it a go. I am within range of these because we are only 210 metres away. So they'll be able to shoot back. So i got to hope I take them down fast. And I can't see anything and my accuracy at this distance is terrible. Oh, it's shooting back. It's shooting back. I hear sparks flying. Where are they coming from? Okay, it's the LCD. All right. Whew. What I might want to do is sort of move a little bit. Nope, that's just going to make my aim terrible. I'm just going to have to... Oh, actually, better idea. Let's go rear on so that it can't shoot my cockpit. I don't think that one even got a shot off. All right. I'm going to move in closer and let's go explore this place. No, turn off. It's all dead. It's fine. Stop worrying. We have one. Oh, there's a part of a Rudolph. I'm glad that didn't get trash cleaned up. Look at that. Still, all 
there. I kind of think we might... Wait. Is that its little crater? Did I hit the... Hmm. Must have hit the ground with one of them. Alright. I'm still suspicious there might be something in here. No. No. Looking good. Cool. We've done it. We've taken the enemy base. Oh, heck yeah. Holy moly. That is a lot of stuff. Wow. That is a huge haul. And there's two refineries here. If you're someone who's taken on one of these before, you might be wondering what the heck this timer block was here for. That was for my original version of the script that extended the antenna range. And this programmable block was the one that it was running off. Well, I would call that a pretty convincing victory. Yes, I suffered the loss of the chicken hawk, and I'm going to need to replace it at some point soon. I've also taken some damage to an LCD on the tick. But, we've defeated the first base. Only took me 70 episodes to get to this point. But we are here. I wonder if I can get the goose up to this little bit. And it feels so good. Oh, there's part of a sandbag. They must have been blown up high in the sky. There's, there's no easy way from down there. I've got to go the long way around the way that I came with the tick initially. Oh, don't roll over. Alright, let's just take off. Let's fly home. Whoa, 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 whoa. Probably help if I was directly behind the thing as I was flying it. Would make it a lot easier to tell where I'm going. Oh, right. I'm currently suffering from a problem that one uh, WSX10 pointed out to me, or reminded me of, which is the tick doesn't have a very good thrust to weight ratio. <laughs> so for me to stay aloft, I can't do much braking. If I want to slow down, I mostly have to uh, stop keeping myself up. Oh geez, slow down. There we go, that's better braking. So now that we've had one successful attack, you'd think the smart thing to do would be to attack that way against all the other bases. Well, I think we all know that I've got no plans on doing the smart thing with any of these attacks. <laughs> Since the smartest thing to do would have been to sap the enemy base, drill underneath it, knock it over, and destroy it that way, and take over control. But that would be too easy. I think, once we get the salvage trailer for the goose done, what we really need to be doing is building a tank. I want to see if I can take on the next base before I even take on its antenna. I want to build something that I hope will be able to go into and then go toward an enemy base, take out the flyers that we run into along the way, and then push on to the base. So. I'm thinking a wheeled vehicle for one simple reason. If I have something that's in the air and I get damaged, I'm going to go down and I'm going to go down hard. Whereas if I'm in a wheeled vehicle, there's a much better chance that I can limp home if I'm badly damaged. Or at least destroy whatever's attacking me and then get some sort of repair work done and then get home that way. It's just not going to be feasible if I'm in a flying vehicle. So. It's going to be... So that's kind of what I'm thinking for my next attack strategy. 
that attack's probably not going to come in a great hurry. As I have a little problem that I've not really dealt with for most of this scenario after I got my first big solar tower up and that is I really need another power source I need to have another big solar array and I have got one heck of a plan for how we can make that thing work I think it's going to either end up being an absolute disaster or absolutely awesome which is pretty much everything that I love about designing stuff in Space Engineers. If you can be doing something that could end horribly, but ends awesomely, that's just perfect. That's perfection to me. Oh, I need to turn off the... That's something I've got to do with the bin chicken when I get back to it. I've got to turn off broadcast on all the sandbags. We've got them all on. Because I turned them on so I could access the other assault sandbags. Ooh, I just thought there is a really cool thing that I'll be able to do with the tank when I build it. I'm going to be able to make a rocket armed. Because it's got... Why did... I really hope that didn't shoot anything. Because the enemy base has those rockets in it, I'm going to be able to use them. Turn their weapons against them. That is what we will do. That's the tick's second battle it survived. A lot less hairy than the first. <laughs> and still, this block keeps being unwelded. Much as I would like to get working on the salvage trailer right away, I actually remembered that I am completely out of iron. And I've also got a few other smaller items that I should probably collect at least one load of with the butterball. So I'm going to take the goose out for another mining trip and yes it is night time. And while yes going out at night is always risky, if we recall I made some passageway lights so we should be able to relatively easily get there and back. What the? What the? Oh geez there's a drifting pursuant coming in. Oh, this is a bad time to be moving. Bad time, bad time, bad time, bad time, bad time. Turn it on, turn it on. Oh no. Park. We gotta go, we gotta go. I think the turrets are doing their job, but... Holy moly. I can't believe I missed that. Oh, down it goes. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, wow. Okay. Whoops. Should not have been outside in my very expensive vehicle when that was going on. I am so lucky I got down the hill as fast as I did because I was almost right underneath that. I completely missed it. When I edit this, I am going to find that spot where I should have seen that and highlight it. Because that was dopey. Right, let's use our lit roadway. Nice and slow. Careful down. It's providing me some good... Whoa. I do love digging these mines and finding my old little drill holes that I... Well, my man-sized ones. Makes me feel like a very, very... Poor <laughs> man's archaeologist. That tiny little hole that I dug all that long ago. That's a few full loads of silicon and a couple of magnesium. And I think I'll fill up the rest of this with iron to complete this trip. Then my, my plan is... That was a very muttered way of saying then what my plan is Ugh. my plan will be to take the materials and actually take full advantage of Izzy's inventory script for the first time I'm going to set the automated assembler thing up 
so that we can use the script to control how many of what different type of block or what different type of component we've got so that we've always got a minimum amount of each type. The reason I needed to come down for this trip was I'd actually almost completely run out of computers which you know shouldn't really be all that easy to do they're very cheap components they should be quite easy for me to find to make more of but I still managed to run out of them so I figure if we use Izzy's script properly that's not going to happen anymore but I wanted to make sure I had the resources in place before I did that particularly as my next project involves detaching this trailer and building a new trailer onto the goose and the way I want to do that is actually build it directly on it rather than building it as a separate thing and then tr hoping that I get the dimensions right as I fear that there's a pretty high chance that if I don't do it that way <gasps> holy moly holy moly holy moly holy moly no 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 bad goose bad goose you do not roll over oh okay have not taken that corner with a full load before or a mostly full load before did not <laughs> think that through oh that was too close that was way too close oh so what I was saying was I'm gonna build from the rotor attached to the truck part of the goose because I fear that if I do it the other way I'm gonna mess up the dimensions and it's gonna be a real pain to try and fix so if I actually do it directly onto it it'll work much better but that means that I'll keep the goose's truck out of action for a little while as it's probably gonna take me a couple of episodes to get that trailer built the plan I have in mind for the trailer is actually to have a miniature grinder pit as well as a landing pad for the oh, I'm gonna need some extra boost here as well as a landing pad for the vehicle that I'm going to use to grind down and to carry everything from the enemy base. So that vehicle will have two functions. It'll go out and it'll break up bits of debris like this into small enough chunks that it can then carry them over to the goose and drop them off. That's kind of my thought on that one. And I reckon I might just stop here. This mine is getting enormous. I've drilled out a huge hole down here. I think I've only ever had one previous survival scenario where I've actually used up an entire deposit. So this will be a little bit of an achievement for the, this to be my second time if I actually ever do use it all up and let's be honest I probably will. Oh god, what am I doing? Oh no. Oh no 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 no, 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 no. This is bad. That drifting and pursuant is coming in really quickly. Uh, right, we're going to have to get up that hill. We're going to need to get behind those sandbags. I don't know if it's coming after me or Reggie. I should probably log Reggie out so that it doesn't go after him. Come on, let's get into our safe spot. Oh, I didn't put a control panel somewhere on the goose that I could reach it so I can control the turret. Oh, seems to be slowing. It made really quick progress initially. Oh, here it comes. Oh, no, it's it's getting shot up by the home base. Wow, this is actually a really cool angle on it. Look at all that gunfire. Look at all those traces. It was definitely going after Reggie. Oh, this is cool. Down she goes. Oh. I just thought of something. I wonder if these... Oh, that was disorientating. I wonder if these drones are surviving longer now since the multiplayer update. I wonder if there was something that changed that meant that they now 
can make it to me more consistently. I'm both excited and horrified by that potential. Because the drones from that base seem to be reaching me all the time, whereas a lot of the time previously, unless I was futzing around over there, they despawned before they actually got anywhere near doing me harm. And that seemed to be the case with all of the other bases as well. I wonder if the drones are making it a little bit further now than they were before. Not quite sure how we'd test that though. I guess we'll know if that um, drone assembly base keeps sending stuff and we keep getting hit with it every time. Then that'll be pretty convincing to me. How do they... It's really strange. Every now and then the drifting pursuants move really, really quickly. Looks like this one's going for home base as well. Oh, yep. There we go. Same as before, getting smashed. Oh, geez, it looks like it's actually hovering above the base, though. No, looks like we're safe from that crash. That's good. Oh, got hidden behind something. Okay, time to head home. Oh, I really hope some of these drifting pursuants don't end up taking out my lights. Because they're powered, they will be they will be a target, Ooh, which is not ideal. Ooh, that was again a little bit sketchy. But I suppose it's a testament to the goose that it managed to pull through all of my terrible driving. It is so much less scary doing this at night with these lights set out. I think I may have done this docking with the butterball off last time, but let's see if these pistons will be enough to bring me into alignment with the connector so I can actually hook up before I detach the trailer. No. Well, rats. Um, maybe... Trailer jack pistons. Maybe we can set their maximum distance to 1.2. Yeah, there we go. Now we can lock. Uh, I can't remember what I'm doing. Can't remember which. I think I've just got it set up so that. Oh, hang on. That's what was wrong. I thought there was a control I hadn't refreshed since I had. Renamed everything, so rotors on, detach. There we go. We're detached. That's parked. Got to remember that I need to drive carefully. Should turn those off. Don't need the thrusters on. And now we want to go to parking spot. Let's build this in parking spot one. So then I'll park the goose there and we'll get on to setting up Izzy's inventory manager and then I'm going to call it a day. We'll come back next time and start designing this salvage trailer. With the update, any of you guys using Izzy's inventory manager may notice that it is not working. That is because of a change that's happened with the update, but there was a fix noted by Made by Saints, where we can just change line 2186 over to something new. So let's pop in there. Let's fix that now. 20, what was it? 2186. That's going to be a long way down. Where are we at now? 2196, almost right. 2180, here we go. Change this one. Paste that over, delete this little space in here so that Steam didn't make this section italicized. And apparently that should work. Check code. Compilation successful! Okay. There we go. <laughs> Is his inventory manager just working again? Yay. Now we can set up the auto crafter, which will involve enable auto crafting. True. I don't want auto disassembling. I want to keep any excess of something that I have. If I want to disassemble it later, I'll do that manually. I don't really like the auto disassembler, particularly with me being power poor. 
I don't want to break something down which uses energy to then build it up again which uses more energy which seems wasteful. So in my situation I don't think the auto disassembler is actually helpful. In a situation where someone's dumping a lot of tools in there, yes it could be useful. Uh, city auto crafting. So let's grab that because that's what we need to name this LCD. And that's about it. Okay. Now I'm going to grab this LCD and we're going to name it that. And look at that. Populated. So I think all we need to do for this is go to edit text. We don't need more grinders. Bulletproof glass. Wanted a mount. Let's say... Uh, if we do want to build something big out of glass, we probably do want a fair bit lying around. Let's say 1500 is how much we want. So once we get below that, it'll then start crafting. Canvases, we do not need to have that many. Let's just keep a minimum of 100. Computers... Let's go with... 2000. Because those Colt Command console packs... Uh, the consoles, the Colt Command consoles, they use up a lot. And let's go 10,000 of those. Okay. Now, that should have started queuing up a thing. Yeah! So the construction components are being queued up so that the difference between this and this can be made up. So then we can just go through all of this and just edit the text. It's actually incredibly easy to fix this up. Detectors, let's make a hundred of them. So it's just queued up everything to make up the difference between what it knows we've got and what I set it to have, which is awesome. And it's going to keep doing that. So anytime we've got more than these parts, it won't bother, it won't worry it and it won't break them down. But anytime we've got less, it's going to make up the difference, which is good because that means that the base won't use up power, manufacturing lots and lots of components like I've done with, where is it? Uh, radio communication components. I did not need to make 2,376 of those. That was a bit of an oopsie by me. So we can fix that. And I have hopefully got plenty of ores in the refineries. Or yeah, got a fair bit going on. Good. Good, good, good. There's a little something extra I'd like to do right now, and that's from a script that Blackthorn sent me. Which is a script that will make these doors controlled by a single programmable block instead of the two that I currently use. This script, if we go into the terminal of our base, go to PB, and go to this hangar door, I've actually got it running already, and I needed to do that because I couldn't remember how to set it up, and I wanted to show you guys <laughs> in a smooth fashion, not with me faffing about making all sorts of mistakes. <sighs> so, this is the script. What this script does is actually controls both doors and sets them to move in opposite directions. Thankfully, the default is actually what I used, which is awesome, so I didn't have to fix it, <sighs> which is great. You can set a timer for how long the doors will stay open before they automatically close. So I don't even need to set up timer blocks for that, which frees up some of my timer blocks that I built for that purpose, which is, again, very cool. The script does show what's happening with the doors if you're looking at the programmable block as the stuff is going on. And all you need to do, if we go to timer block... And we go to hangar doors close. Let's set up this one because I haven't actually done it. Is set up actions. I probably don't need to have a close, but I thought I'd have a close just in case I want to set up like a base lockdown sort of thing. So what we need for close is we'll remove that. And we want base hangar door PB. Yep, that one. Run. And then just close. And it seems like it is case sensitive, so you will want to capitalize the C or capitalize the open for open. Now that one's done, so let's just grab our open. And if I hit trigger now, the doors will open. And I've also corrected the function of the sensor. So if we go into our terminal and go to sensor and we go to our hangar door safety, this one is set up to turn the uh, programmable block on and off instead of the timer block which is what it was doing before so if we fly in here if 
I go in, we should have PB, hang a door. It is currently off. Closing in 56 seconds, but it is frozen. Let's move out of the sensor range. And terminal, uh, PB, go to our hangar door. It's now running, it is counting down, and in 28 seconds, it'll close those doors for us. That is so much better. Clearing up a couple of programmable blocks, and in fact, let's clear those up now. PB, hang it all right, you are just going to be blank. And TB, uh, do I have base TB hang a door? I don't even know what you do. Oh, you are the old setup. Okay. We're just going to get rid of that so I know I can use you for something else. And I will keep the close in the open for now. And there we go. Automatically closed. Perfect. Thank you very much, Blackthorn. That was great. I took a little while to set that up. He actually sent it to me... Jeez. When was it? It was like two weeks ago. But... So worth doing because I will undoubtedly use those programmable blocks and timer blocks for something else now. <sighs> I feel like there was something else I wanted to do around here. What was it? What I might do with that programmable block I just freed up for use is put a docked ship list. So base PB docked list. Go edit, browse scripts. It's one of Izzy's ones. It's a docked ship info. There we go. Okay. Don't really need to do much. Just need to copy this string and we'll put it in the name of the LCD. Okay. Script is running. Quickest way to get to this LCD is like that. There we go. Now we can see all of the ships that are docked and if I ever get around to naming the connectors properly, I'll be able to know which connector is has which thing at it. Connector to... Let's name this properly. Base connector tick. There we go. So will that update? It should in a little bit. The tick. Oh yeah, there we go. The tick. Dirt buddy. But dirt, dirt buddy. Dirt buggy extraordinaire at base connector tick. And it shows conveniently what their power percentages are at. And I'm not sure exactly what LCD I want to put that on, but I just put it at this one for the moment. I'm going to set up M Master's automatic LCD soon as well for the other things for the tick, but it was just something that I thought of since I was doing a few script updates right now. So, with that set up, next time we are going to build a salvage rig for the goose and look at that base we're gonna salvage isn't it glorious there's so much there it's gonna it's gonna need a lot of storage this salvage thing for the goose hopefully i can figure out a nice way of doing that so there's that next time and as always plenty more to come so i'll see you then